Welcome, everybody, and um, we're glad that you are here joining us for our final installment of our Brown Bag Lunch uh, design presentations. We are thrilled today to have Matthew Mazoda presenting his conceptual design proposal. Hey, Matthew. His <laughs> conceptual design proposal for the Del Rio Trail. My name is Donald Gensler. I run our Art in Public Places program through the City of Sacramento's Office of Arts and Culture. I'm joined today by members of our team, uh, Beth Jones, Beth, Linda Jolly, and in the background is Diana Rufner helping us with um, our technical support here in Zoom. So some of you are artists or have been connected in some way with the Del Rio Trail. As you know, it's an almost five mile long new trail. It's gonna run from Pocket Road all the way up to Riverside Boulevard, at which point it crosses over to an existing set of trails along the river. So it, along with um, just being a wonderful opportunity for more trails, it also brings this great opportunity for people to commute and utilize our public spaces. Um, all the way from South Sacramento, all the way really to connect with other trails downtown. So we're thrilled to have the opportunity to present you know, new design concepts uh, through a grant that our office received through uh, the CLEAN Act, that's a state grant and administered through our Department of Transportation, Caltrans. And we're very thankful about that opportunity. It allowed us to hire 27 artists to create work about the trail. Seven of them, um, some of them that seven of them will be creating uh, permanent public art along the trail, and then we'll have a, a large signage campaign as well with plaques and signs, uh, giving a bit of trail history and all types of things. So we look forward to everyone enjoying that. And we appreciate you being part of, of prior events and uh, this discussion today. Today, we are going to hear from Matthew Mazoda. Uh, Matthew has done work around the country and creates innovative work, often working with communities hand in hand and developing how these projects evolve. It's been, um, it's been my great pleasure to meet Matthew, both when he came here to visit and uh, through discussions over the phone. He's very engaged in site exploration and considerations around how the site and the artwork will best be kind of married together so that when he's completed, you know, my, my, my sense is Matthew cares very much about how the communities within Sacramento will utilize and enjoy um, the work that he has uh, uh, made here. So with that, I will say uh, Matthew will present for up to 30 minutes or less. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to add your questions to the chat and um, or comments. Uh, but also afterwards, um, we'll have a discussion. We'll have at least 25 minutes for a robust discussion and questions afterwards. So if you have those questions, you can hold those. Um, ask that you uh, mute your microphone while Matthew is presenting, but um, feel free to keep your camera on or turn it off, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And again, we just appreciate you so much for being here and being part of this dialogue in this presentation and the Del Rio Trail. So with that, Matthew, I'd like you to take it over. Super. Thank you, Donald. Um, can everybody hear me? And if you can't, please speak up. Linda says I have no mic, but I have a mic. So everybody can hear me, right? Sounds perfect. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, my name is Matthew Mazada. I work with communities in their public spaces. As Donald said, I work nationally. I work internationally. Every project I do is basically, how do you make a custom made piece for a location? I'm gonna share my screen. We're taking on, um, let's see here. This project, um, and I'll get into where it's located 
as well. But the project title is called Uplifting Experience. I'm just gonna show a little bit of my previous work really quickly. This project is called Cloud House. It actually collects rainwater and it rains on this tin roof. This is a house that unfolds into a theater. This was a storefront. Oh, you can't really see it here, but it's unfolded and becomes a theater. Um, I've done work that's in realism, like a flamingo, tables that unfold and serve meals, uh, trees that have benches, and uh, moving aspects. They actually move in the wind. Actually, this is a project that somewhat similar to what I'm going to show, however, in a different form. But a uh, meadow view. This is the neighborhood we're talking about. And we're talking about Freeport and Pocket, this corner. So many people know uh, where this is in the city. I just wanna drill down a little bit more. Pocket Road and Freeport. So we're gonna be right on this corner. And I'll just go back one more time so people can see where this is. We're all the way down here, Meadow View. On this corner, specifically right in here. And there's a plan. This is where the railroad tracks are. The path will come through here. Actually, I think it comes on this side, then crosses over, and we'll see that later, the tracks, and ends right at this, not ends, but uh, this part of the path ends right here, and is picked up on the other side of the street and continues. So that's where we are. This is being in the intersection, pocket and uh, Freeport. We're looking at this, landmass at this moment. There's nothing there. However, what's coming are trees and this public artwork um, as well. And the tracks are in the background. Here now we're on pocket. We're looking at this. You can barely see it here. Railroad tracks. So this is Freeport on one side and in parallel, many people probably know this, are railroad tracks kind of hidden by this berm. I think they're exposed further up Freeport. I'm going to give one more angle. This is on Freeport looking at Pocket. So it's this area right here, right? I mean, it's just a big field at this moment, but it's part of this larger plan for the path. The reason I'm showing all this is that the consideration for this work wanted to take in all the traffic, all the eyes that will see it as they drive by. So one of the strategies to create this work was to make something big enough and visible enough that you could see it every day, that someone could pass it and go, I know exactly where that is. Are you talking about that work? Um, so, uh, however, this one's actually designed so that you can actually experience it as a pedestrian as well, if you're walking on the path. So here again, I'm just putting this up here to show us where we are, railroad tracks. I think the path comes here, crosses over, railroad tracks and ends up in this corner, picks up again on the other side of pocket. And so I'm just putting it here. This is kind of a rendering of where the artwork will be. Just I'm putting it there just so people know where it is. Hopefully everybody could understand that from that little description I gave. This is the path crossing over the railroad tracks, pocket and Freeport. I saw Jesse in the, in the people here. I did a couple of um, outreach sessions and Jesse was part of one of them. But so I just wanna go over what I collected. And so this is a meeting earlier this year, spring, I guess. Um, this was with community. And um, these are the key takeaways I, I got, took notes as I asked questions. I'll just read through these. So this might be a little bit dry, but I guess this gives the context of, of why the design. Meadow view was not connected to the rest of the city quote unquote, it felt like the end of the city. Um, it's been seen as underserved, facing discrimination and stigmas. Uh, thought to be a high crime area, but it's not true. Very diverse ethnically, it has rich cultural history. Meadowview is the most diverse neighborhood in Sacramento. Now these are people's sentiments. So this is how people feel about their community. Then one of the comments was this intersection needs something life affirming. And you'll see that um, the design plays into that, something that gives life to the corner and even the title, uplifting experience. Um, desire to promote walking. So, um, and there's a tree canopy campaign that someone is doing. I think her name is Sada. She's working with other people. 
And this is to bring more shade to the area to make it more walkable. And uh, one of the ideas was, can the artwork provide shade? And actually that's one of the key elements we put into this as well. The artwork would uh, want to make, uh, want to walk on the trail, make you want to walk on the trail. So something that would draw you in. This is a path that's not been here. Um, people do ride bikes, people do walk, but this is going to encourage a whole bunch more. So how can it get someone for the first time? Get people walking on a trail for the first time. Uh, a gateway to get people there. So what can we say? And so part of another part of this was a landmark. Can this be a landmark? Can someone go, I'll meet you right there? So that was another part of this design, not put it low to the ground, but actually bring it up into the air. Then I met with the councilwoman um, and her team. Um, and so she talked about what she's working on and what would be good from her perspective. And she talked about building on our diverse assets. She actually grew up there as well. Um, create a healthier neighborhood. So this path will be part of that, of course, mobility and exercise and walking and connection. She thought about a place for reflection, a, a moment where you could sit down. Um, then she said the house is the place where people hang out and express themselves. And, and this is actually the crux, uh, the crux of where this kind of went. Um, she talked about people live here because of their family and they have multi-generational houses. So you have many different people, grandparents to kids living in the same house. And one um, way we found out about that, or at least that was exemplified, was the highest cases of COVID because of the multi-generational houses. I guess there was many people crossing age barriers living together and that passed on COVID. Um, however, she said the house um, is where people hang out. She says, you, and there's all this uh, diversity. She says, you can hear mariachi mu music coming from people's backyards. People break bread in their backyards and their house together with family and friends. Backyard parties going on all the time. You could hear different types of music. Spiritual ceremonies going on with gongs. Um, and what happens in your house is your identity. So the premise of this was like, you know what, there's all these different people, but where is it expressed? And I think a lot of times it's expressed in the house. So this, this project takes on that. So here's the project, Uplifting Experience. You know what I'll do is um, I'll show a video first, because I think that could help us. So this project, if everybody can still see my screen, is made up of steel, supports, swings, or at least benches, and then up top is the house shape. And these are all made of elements that spin in the wind. So this is constantly moving kinetic artwork. So this would be something that can be seen from Freeport and Pocket. A landmark, people would pass this. Oh, I know exactly where that is. However, this is also designed for people to take a break on the path and say, listen, I'm, I'm going to be here. In a way, conceptually, this is about a house that's lifted up and exposing the people um, underneath. The wind would be blowing each one of these um, elements, so it's kinetic. And they, in this case, they're all painted one color, but the plan is to have them have slight shifts, so there's almost like a pulsate in this house. It's really about grabbing the eye when you drive by this thing, you want to see if there's wind, this thing should be kind of not glowing, but uh, exciting to look at. So these are just different perspectives. And hopefully everybody can see that. Right now, the swings are tied together. We're not sure if that's how it's going to go when we get through engineering. Um, but that's how it is here. So I'm just going to pop back over to this. These are multiple views. Here's the path coming. We'd be right on the corner of Freeport, which is on your right. And then you'd be on Pocket. Railroad track is off to the left in this one. So this would be right off the path. Different view. But this is basically you're walking through. Take a break. Maybe you're drinking water. Maybe your bike is here. You're part of the visual scenery. People are passing by. The house is above and you're below. This is kind of looking maybe from Freeport, but onto pocket. Looking down, bird's eye view. Obviously, there's back here is Zeberg and all this. There's buildings. This is just a rendering. These trees at the moment will not be this tall. Actually, this thing will be the tallest thing. 
when it first arrives, these trees will take time to mature. So this uh, is creating shade for a while, I guess. This will be a destination where people will actually be able to park their bike, or sit down for a moment in some shade before these trees make it. Oh, I showed the animations. So I'm gonna read this little text. Uplifting experience is an interactive public artwork designed specifically for the corner of Freeport and Pocket in South Sacramento. The whimsical, colorful, and kinetic artwork is in the shape of a house made of individual sp spinning elements, floats above two benches and two swings. The artwork is designed to be seen by people passing by in cars as an icon of the neighborhood, and also as a shade structure to rest and relax under for those traveling on the new pedestrian trail. Uplifting experience is developed through conversations with several members of the Meadowview neighborhood and surrounding community. We're just gonna look at some of the schematic just from the side, what it would look like. Some of the heights and its location. So this, as I said before, designed up nice and high. So this can be a uh, icon or a landmark. However, it functions as well as some place to sit when you're uh, traveling. So anyways, I just wanna say thank you. That's what I have right now. Um, we can open it up to questions. I see a whole bunch in the chat. Um, what is the best way to do that, uh, Donald? Uh, that's great. Thank you, Matthew. Um, let's just go ahead and stop the screen share. Um, will help me to <clears throat> be able to um, see people's hands um, and I'll, I'll respond to some of the questions or comments first in the chat and then we'll open it up further. Um, and I see Jesse's got a hand up. So let me just quickly go through here. Some of these are just comments. Nighttime lighting. So right now there is not uh, a plan to add lighting. We, we, we specifically did um, consider lighting elements, uh, but really de uh, in other in all areas of the trail, but ultimately because the trail is predominantly dawn to dusk, um, lighting was not something that we had, you know, uh, envisioned um, for this artwork. It is something possible to be added um, at a later date, um, certainly would be willing to look at that. Uh, and actually, of all the locations, this one may be potentially the easiest to accomplish that because I think there is a transformer right at the intersection there. Um, so it might be a possibility, but thanks for bringing that up. A couple bike racks nearby. I agree. And I actually, when you mentioned, you know, place their bikes, I thought, oh, I don't want people, you know, hooking their bikes to the sculpture. So, um, so maybe creating, um, maybe we uh, as a city could add some bike racks nearby so that people could place their bikes there and then take a moment to sit on your sculpt, sit at the sculpture would be wonderful. Um, electrics, phone charging stations. Well, you know, it's, it's possible. We need to, we need to balance uh, how much we want people to spend time there. Uh, and, uh, and at the same time, uh, when, when we've allowed for charging and things like that in these public spaces, sometimes, um, uh, it gets a little out of control or people destroy it or whatever. So um, that I'm not sure about that, but we'll look into that. Uh, I think it's certainly a great idea um, and certainly something to consider. Um, Jesse, uh, would you like to uh, unmute yourself and um, you can keep your camera on off or turn it on, whichever you feel comfortable with. Thanks, Don. Uh, my question is, uh, well, I actually have two or three. But you mentioned right. about lighting, and I think earlier I said that, you know, no disrespect, but you do know, or everybody know the problem we do have with the homeless population. And if we don't have lights out there at night, or some type of lights, what's going to really happen to that trail? We don't want to see it turn to something bad because of that. And my second question is, um, the houses that are on the... Uh, the pole, what material is that made out of? Um, Jesse, are you speaking about, yeah, I'll try to answer it. I'll just go for what material. So the bench 
itself will start at the ground. So it's, it will have a concrete foundation. Then there'll be supports mm -hmm. that will go up. Those will be some kind of steel. We'll have to figure out either it's going to be stainless or painted mild. I'm not sure yet. The benches itself, right now we're thinking Akoya, which is a sustainable wood. I've used it for a number of projects. It, it weathers really well. It lasts long. It's hard. It's environmental sustainable. So that's the wood, the benches. As you go up, to the structure itself, the house above. Right now, it's gonna have a steel infrastructure and we have turbines right now. We've been pricing those out to see if that can work. But these would be sandblasted and then painted with an automotive paint, so it would be long lasting. But um, individual turbines, we don't know exactly what they'll look like, um, what will make the most sense, but they are each individual. I think there's like almost 300 of them. The, the idea is that they would spin, Jesse. So so yeah. as as there's any kind of breeze, those little turbines would would spin right. around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That that I understand. And, you know, being a, a metal work, I'm always interested in what type of metal. So uh, they're all comp compatible to each other where you mm -hmm. want to have one. Um, I guess the simple work would be riding out because they're not compatible to like if you try to put copper on steel or stainless on on steel you know that's kind of what i was wondering looking at the longevity on the artwork as opposed to the type of metal work that's going to be done um jesse it sounds like you actually know things um about metal yeah certain metals are not compatible like aluminum and steel um we work with a structural engineer and so there will be designing for seismic for wind loads um even snow loads and yeah metal compatibility all those things there's a lot of people that review these things before they go into any kind of fabrication so just know that we're in good hands i think even the city is on board with that kind of thinking it's just public artworks have to be done right so they last long um but thank you for bringing that up and i only mention that because uh we participate of course don knows with the kinetic art at the corner of uh, Meadowview and 24th Street. And we had nothing but problems with that design is still not up. Yeah, you know? that, that you no, know, you're right, Jesse. That's an ongoing issue. We're working with the artist. He took some um, kind of unexpected risks in terms of trying to make it so that it would be lighter and that it would move more. Um, that's a very different design from the type of thing that Matthew is proposing. So we'll mm -hmm. say that, um, um, you know, that actually I'm, I'm meeting again with him later today. So it, that is in the works. It is taking a lot longer than anticipated, but we are trying to work with that artist to, to correct, to correct that issue. So uh, I think that this, from, from what I've seen, this uh, kinetic work um, feels totally doable and um and i think uh matthew you know matthew shows also the, the the experience and knowledge in 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 fabrication to to be able to pull this off um so i'm i, I feel pretty comfortable about um where we are in in this particular piece um and i will say that um this this concept of the house did come out largely jesse out of those conversations that he had with with you and and others um so that the house as symbol seemed uh really important i want to say one last thing we had a um, small symposium yesterday regarding placemaking and um you know the conversation did come up about you know you know should you have benches right or should you not have benches because of the worry that you know of uh, unsheltered population or folks that you didn't you know might just camp out there and there was a interesting kind of discussion that we had about like well do we then start to design everything around you know never having any place for seating or anything like that so i guess we're trying to focus on designing for the city that we want and um and we're always going to have folks that are struggling uh and and you know we'll we'll see and we we, we hope that we have ways to help them um and we hope that they'll they or anybody would be respectful and uh, you know with the artwork. Uh, I will say that there's no there's no never a reason and, and there's no laws 
keeping us from removing somebody if they are, you know, loitering on on a ad or on a piece of artwork. It's a little different from at a park. This is a this would be a city asset. It would be a city city property, a physical piece of property. So we'll keep an eye on that. But I, I it has certainly been something to to think of, and we'll continue the lighting conversation. There's a larger conversation around lighting. It's possible while we may not have lighting and probably won't have lighting on the trail itself, largely because it goes through residential neighborhoods and you know people don't necessarily want lights and things on all the time. Uh, but this location may lend itself to lighting, so we'll we'll see. We'll we'll investigate that further with Public Works. Okay, and uh, thank you, lastly, thank you for those points. Yeah, yeah. and lastly, I just mentioned it because people are coming to me and they look up there, they don't see that artwork. And asking me, and I'm saying, well, everybody's saying, well, we should deserve better. And uh, the thing of it is, when you see art in other places, in other part of the city, you don't see them like broken, torn, or disrepair. So that's the reason why I asked, and that way I have a little bit more information to go back to. Well, oh, that's that's individual. fine. You're talking again about the one at, at the Pinnell yeah. Center, and and that's that's just a very unfortunate situation. Trust yeah. me. Uh, it has nothing to do with the location at all. Uh, in right. fact, we tried to go above and beyond to make uh, something happen there that was going to be uplifting. Um, we did do a mural project there as well that we hope people really enjoyed and were part right. of, and I know you were part of. Right. Um, but uh, that that is an ongoing issue that we've been working with the council member who's been very involved and and very, you know, um, helpful in making sure that we do keep on a schedule to, to have that uh, corrected. Um, so uh, yeah, the plan right now is prior to the end of the year, that will be, that that situation will be corrected and rectified and that sculpture will be uh, repaired, but it does, it does take some time. We wanna make sure that when it's done, it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesse, I'm always available. If you have questions, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I did put my email again in the chat for anybody that has questions regarding this project or anything related to our public art program. Um, and uh, But today I'd like to continue to you know, have a dialogue about Matthew's piece, which technically is not in, in D8, right. but, yeah. um, but that certainly will be an important part of the, the Meadowview landscape. It's still uh, very much a part of that. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Donald, I All see right. any question. other questions yeah, yeah about um uh about if it's naturally wind driven and yes the answer is yes all these turbines are only driven by wind they won't move otherwise but there's they're specially designed only to capture wind so no electronics in this one at all these are elements that spin in the wind designed to spin in the wind and there's a ton of commercial applications for these um, and they're all over the place. Some of them scare birds out of fields and they just run all the time just by wind. Some of them actually draw heat out of your house, roof turbines. We're going to be using something that's, you know, proven to last a long time and uh, be able to spin, but with no electricity, only uh, wind. No, that's great. Um, and I think that was a really important aspect of the of the design and we appreciate you kind of thinking through that and uh, yeah for whatever delta breeze we have uh, we're, we're always happy we're always happy for it we do have some um, occasional very strong winds um, so um, we'll know that you'll be engineering that um, you know for those types of situations as well um, that's great. And I do like that, you know, that public art is for everybody. And, and I will say, um, it was a comment that, that somebody made in the chat. Um, you know, that is part of what we're, we're doing here, right? So while uh, I, I personally am very happy about art that is in galleries and museums, um, we also feel like this is an opportunity for people to interact with the art in the physical spaces that they visit. And, uh, uh, you know, our hope is that uh, folks that live here will um, very much enjoy and maybe even learn something new about this work. We're going to have a whole series of signs up and down the trail that we hope will give some of the history of the trail, but also um, information about the artwork. 
so we hope that will be uplifting and interesting for people um, that live here and see it each day and maybe see it at different times, but also for people to come to visit. And we do hope that people might consider this as a destination to come. And um, when they come visit Sacramento, they may want to come and take a bike ride on the Del Rio Trail. Uh, I think would be a wonderful addition to our city. Um, there was a really nice, I'm going to mention this real quick, uh, just also because we are in, in District 7. I had a, a nice uh, conversation with Council Member Jennings at one point, and uh, he described and uh, he gave a little anecdote of being in Washington, D.C. for the cap to cap uh, event. And while he was there, he grew up in the area. And so um, he was just going to go visit, you know, some family. And he was going to jump in an Uber. And somebody said, well, you know, we well, really should just take one of these bikes, you know, that you can rent uh, just on the street. Like we have our jump or line bikes. And he hadn't, he hadn't done that. And so he said, okay, and he gave it a try. And he said, he told me that he was biking down, you know, Capitol Mall in, um, in Washington, DC and looking at all the monuments that he had seen for years and years growing up in that area. And, uh, but that being on a bike, uh, he got to see it in a new way um, that he really personally enjoyed. And that, you know, when he got to his destination, he just, it just reminded him how, you know, many folks in Sacramento may not think about um, the benefit of potentially biking places, uh, both to get where you need to go, but also to see the environment around you. So I thought it was a wonderful anecdote, and I've um, shamelessly shared it with other folks, um, because I do think that this may be a really great opportunity. And, and, uh, and Matthew, your piece is very much at the beginning of the trail. And so it would be a nice area where if folks were going to go on a bike ride, they might gather there and meet there and then uh, head north from from that location. So um, for me, um, you know, kind of thinking about how all this holistically goes together, that's been a really nice aspect to your to your design proposal. All right. Dedicated uh, protected bike lanes on both pocket and Meadowview. Yeah. Agreed. I think there, um, and I will say there's a lot of work going on with uh, what are called kind of complete complete streets. Um, and I think we can do so much more in Sacramento, um, dedicated bike lanes where people feel safe. Um, and then, you know, also, yeah, like you said, be able to access the trail directly. Um, so biking on the, on the road and access to the trail. And then I do hope uh, that that Sacramento as a whole might be looking at, you know, additional wayfinding that will help. So part of the idea here is that this trail integrates into other opportunities throughout the city. So we're thinking about this in terms of artwork, but we very much do um, feel, I feel passionate. I know all everybody working on this project um, and on our team, but also in public works and other areas in the city feel very passionate about the, the kind of environmental justice and the social justice aspect to this, <clears throat> giving everybody the opportunity to, to bike and enjoy the city um, all the way from pretty far south to north. All right. Any other questions or comments? I, I can always keep going with uh, questions and comments, but I want to see if anybody else had any other comments or questions they might like to add. Oh, Jesse, did you have your hand raised again? Oh, you're on you're on mute. Just to unmute yourself there. Just a quick question on. Um, yeah. What what will we do about security? Will we have cameras? Has anybody asked that yet? Where we can monitor what's going on throughout the trail, real time you know, think, cameras. Yeah, I don't I don't think the plan is to have cameras along the entire trail. Although I, I. I, please don't hold me to that. I know there has been some conversation about cameras around the intersections. Um, and partially that was for safety reasons. I know there is a, an entire campaign and additional funding that was received. And you you might notice from Matthew. Matthew, if you could, could you pull up real quick the plan view of your um, piece that you showed a couple times? 
Could you pull that up real quick? I think this is an important thing. And Jesse, I believe right now the plan is if there are cameras, and I believe there are some, they will be around the intersections. But if if he can pull up that, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you, Matthew. That plan view. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. So notice how the trail you know, does this kind of strange, almost strange curve, right? It almost becomes perpendicular to Freeport Boulevard. So what's happening is because the trail is down here, down below, it's coming up and over to meet with the existing crosswalk. So if you're familiar with this area, if the trail had gone straight, there was no crosswalk there. Uh, yeah, if, if, if it had just gone straight uh, across Pocket Road, right, kind of where his cursor is, it, there was no crosswalk. So the plan is to meet to existing crosswalks and where in other areas where there are no crosswalks or whether it's kind of questionable, they, I believe the city is working, uh, Public Works is working on adding those. So um, they have been looking very much holistically at the crosswalks. And then I think there is some conversation around cameras, although I can't give you this, the specifics on that. Um, I'll, next time I meet with them, I'll, I'll look into it and see what we're doing. I, you know, I, a little hesitant to kind of have a CCTV style cameras mm -hmm. everywhere, um, right. you know, just in terms of people's privacy, but Jesse, I'm totally with you, um, you know, for safety, I think, you know, could be an interesting opportunity. Um, I will say, and this is one thing in terms of safety that I've said, and this doesn't really relate to the artwork, but just to the trail itself. People use this trail now actually quite extensively, um, and it is not really a city created park or trail at this point. It's just a un unused land that happens to be owned by the city. Of course, now there's construction, but what I've, what I've generally have told folks is that, um, you know, this trail will, at the very least, it is now going to be a monitored area by the city. So, you know, the parks department is actually on board to take care of all the maintenance uh, around the trail. And of course, in their parks, and then uh, public works and traffic engineering work on the trail itself. But um but I will say just to allow anybody's fears about, you know, safety, it's not, it's not possible anything can happen, but um, the benefit is now we are really creating a dedicated trail space that, um, you know, at, at the very least is going to be monitored m much more than it is now. And whether there's and I, cameras or not, I don't know. And I just bring that up because some people know what happened out by Sac State when people walk on those trails and, I do realize uh, we don't want to be monitored every time, but <laughs> you know, public safety is very important to get people to utilize it. Yeah. Otherwise, if it's not, they're going to sit there and nobody going to utilize it because they're going to be scared. Because they're going to be scared, right? Yeah. So it's it's a it's a good conversation to have. I think I think we're going to build it and then see what kind of see they, how things are evolving. <laughs> build it and they will come. Yeah, the, okay, the field you. the field of dreams idea, but no, very yeah. a very relevant important topic of discussion um so great thank you know, you yeah you're welcome thank you for that question and, and i'd say i would i would say this is somewhat similar to the parks in our city um that th those are open spaces that uh you know certainly crime is possible there uh but uh but the fact is those spaces are being monitored being you know uh, maintained uh, and we have staff, city staff there regularly as well. So, um, so we'll see. I, uh, I, I feel really good about being part of this work. Um, you know, in terms of what we were able, the funding we were able to leverage from the state to be able to add this to a project that's been in the works for over a decade. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, and I will say, Matthew, I really do love the swings. I think there's just something so wonderful about the opportunity of swinging and having fun at a, at a space like that. Um, so I know this is a conceptual design. Uh, Matthew, you know, may need to make adjustments here and there as the as the project evolves. So we always recognize that. Uh, but uh, but this is the direction he's going to go. We're not going to get a flamingo all of a sudden. Uh, this is the direction we're going to go. 
Um, and um, and I, I think it's a good one, Matthew. So uh, we'll we, we'll we'll continue to work on the on the details with you and and how to really you know secure that. Uh, but I think uh, I think it'll be a welcome addition and a good good uh, specifically for this area uh, of the trail that will be a nice kind of gathering space for folks. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other? Let's see. Yeah, the, I agree. I agree. Resolve of the the there there is going to be a kind of mesmerizing uh, aspect to it. A, a lot of little, slightly moving parts. Any other uh, comments or uh, questions? Right. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you for um, you know presenting with us today uh, and sharing this this concept with us. Uh, I know it'll evolve, uh, a, a, you know, more in design development, but it's um, it'll be a really kind of wonderful location for the piece, Beth. Yeah, just really quickly, um, I think um, we've kind of said this to each other internally, uh, Matthew, but I think it's going to be a wonderful landmark for that neighborhood, really mm -hmm. uh, powerful in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear. You know, it's interesting that, you know, although the conversation around the house as an important symbol for folks um, in, in with some of the folks that were discuss with. Um, it also is a symbol that has reoccurred in Matthew's work at different times, that house image. And he shared with us a very early project that he did um, with uh, kind of houses with people kind of moving along underneath them. And um, anyway, I always like to see that, that artists, because we, we really are, um, you know, we're, it's part of this collection of work that's going to be along the trail. And Matthew, it's, um, it's great honor to have you here uh, creating a work for us in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. We were familiar with your work around the country and really look forward to seeing this piece here. And we'll know that we'll have a piece of Matthew Mazzotta's work. Mazzotta, I'm sorry, I heard you pronounce your name and I realize I've been butchering it for months now. So <laughs> apologies, uh, but we'll have a piece of Matthew Mazzotta's work here as well. Uh, and Scott, thank you. I appreciate that from the Southland Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, you all have been great partners throughout this entire process and look forward to continue to work with you all. Uh, I will uh, say as we start to conclude, um, tomorrow is the final day. Uh, actually, well, no, Saturday is the final day of our of our show for the phase one artists. Um, uh, for the Del Rio Trail, if you have not been to Twisted Track Gallery, I encourage you to go there. They're open, I believe, tonight from uh, six to ten, from some, something like something like that. And then tomorrow, I believe, they open at twelve. Um, but again, it's uh, or Saturday. Um, they uh, the work that is created was really quite fascinating. Uh, Twenty different artists that created the work about the trail. And we hope to continue this dialogue while folks like Matthew and, and the other artists who've presented this week and last week are continuing to develop their work. We hope that we'll be able to work with some of these artists that were our artist ambassadors um, to continue to do some additional workshops and things. So please stay tuned. Please do check out um, our website. I know Diana put it in the chat early on. It's delriotrailart.org. And we do update, we do our updates on that website. So that's really important um, that if you're wondering what's going on with, with our art projects, uh, please do check out that website. You're also welcome to email me. I did put my email in the chat as well, dgensler at cityofsacramento.org. So with that, uh, I really encourage you all to, you know, Stay tuned for what's coming next. The work will 
the plan is for all the work to be installed by July 2024. So we're really working hard to meet that somewhat difficult timeline, uh, but that's tied to our funding. So please stay tuned, and we really look forward to everybody being able to enjoy the trail uh, and enjoy the artwork and enjoy the experience here in Sacramento. Thanks for joining us today for this final session. This will be posted on YouTube along with the others. You can check it out from our Office of Arts and Culture YouTube channel. Just put that in Google and that'll come right up. And we've already got a number of videos uh, from the past week and last week and this week up uh, already. And so we'll get Matthew's up as soon as possible. Matthew, again, thank you so much. Thank you all of you for being here today and, and for, for our team here in the Office of Arts and Culture. Thanks again to you all. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.